Hi, and welcome to Something to Talk About. I'm Linda McNamee, and for the next hour, as you saw in the introduction, we will be learning all about Burlington's Youth and Family Services. So before we start delving deeply into that topic, I would like you to, I would like to invite you to give us a call if you have a question for my guest, whom you will meet momentarily. You can give us a call at 781 Two seven zero nine one nine nine, or you can always email me at talk at bcattv.org. So the email you can suggest a future topic, you can forward me a question, however you wish to use it. And as always, I would like to thank the crew for this evening. Chris Flaherty, Colleen Moore, and Jolie Atwood have kindly given up their Wednesday evenings to come hang out here at BCAT and volunteer for the show and make sure everything runs smoothly and I don't set the place on fire, which I haven't done yet. And last but definitely not least, I want to stay, uh, thank my husband Paul for staying home for Daddy Date Night. Hope you're having fun with the kids before summer vacation strikes really soon. So, okay, logistics aside, I would like to now introduce my wonderful guest for this evening, Christine Shrewen, who is an LMHC, so Licensed Mental Health Clinician. Counselor. Yeah, counselor, oh. That's okay. Sorry. And you are the Executive Director of Burlington Youth yes. and Family Services. Well, welcome. Thank you. Thank Pleasure you to be here. so much. So how long have you been with Youth and Family Services here in Burlington? I've been in the department for 25 years, the last um, eight, I think this is my eighth year as the director. Oh, uh, Prior cool. to that, I was one of the clinici clinicians on oh, staff. Okay. How big um, is the staff? There are four full-time positions, clinical positions, okay. that are held by um, five people. So, Okay, like a little job sharing going on there? Yeah, back in the day, actually, when um, I first came on board, I covered for one of the clinicians that had gone out on maternity leave. Oh, okay. When she came back, we split that position. So oh. um, it continues to be a split position, if you will. Excellent. So. so that's, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm amazed that you've been there for 25 years because I can only imagine there must be like a high burnout rate in that field um, working with everybody's issues. There is, there's a high burnout in the field when, um, you know, a lot of places today, the number of cases that you need to work with, oh, you know, that's really okay. where the burnout piece comes from. Okay. So um, we've been fortunate enough so that we have a, a caseload that's really manageable, mm -hmm. if you would, so. Um, and we do, in addition to the counseling, there are other pieces that we do okay. um, within the organization, so. Yeah, I was seeing some of that on the website. I yeah. can't wait to talk about sure. it. But what made you decide to enter the field of social work? Did you start down a different road and then switch over, well, or? It's interesting, yeah. I started actually out in the business world, and um, psychology had always been something that was of interest to me, and then, um, I decided to go and take a couple of classes to see what, okay. it, what it was like and um, really enjoyed the, you know, the classes, what I was able to learn about human psychology. Oh, wow. So I decided to go back, um, actually leave the business world, go back to school full time, get oh, my wow. degree and... Uh, Is it a master's level degree? Okay. Correct, yep. So I finished my undergraduate degree and got my master's in counseling psychology. Excellent. And um, as part of your work when you go into the field of mental health as you do a internship. Okay. And so um, I actually interned as an intern at, uh, at the time, we used to be called the uh, Life Center, Burlington Community Life Center. Oh, so um, okay. I was an intern there for a year. And then, um, like I said, when there was a staff person that had gone okay. on maternity leave. Okay, so you just leave, kind of, okay. Um, I actually I went in, into the outside world, if you would, and worked in a oh, psychiatric okay. hospital. Ooh, and wow. so, okay. yeah, it was a good, it was really good experience. And then um, one of the staff, like I said, went on maternity leave. And okay. so at that point, that's where I came in and filled in and, and been there ever since 1994. So. Wow. Yeah. So. so where is the office located? Well, we're in a new space right now. We had been at uh, 61 Center Street, which okay. is, you know, where the rec department, and everybody knows where the rec department everybody is. is the rec department. In that same building. And um, they've expanded the Council on Aging there. So we oh. got moved down the street to uh, right next to Town Hall, 33 Center Street, okay. which is Excellent. where the old Citizen Bank used to be. So you're so officially there now, right? You're officially been uh, there. been there about a little over a year now. So. Wow. Mm. Yep. Okay, shows how much I pay attention. So you mentioned that there are 
five other counselors and a four person staff. Correct. What other types of staff are on hand? Um, during the academic year, we have four graduate, typically four graduate students that um, oh, join us. Yes, okay. So we grow by 50% um, cool. during the year. And um, they come from schools. There's Leslie University, oh. Simmons School of Social Work, um, Salem State is another one, oh, okay. UMass Boston. Uh, okay. This year we have a student from North e Northeastern University, so from a okay. bunch of different schools that have different counseling or social work programs. So. Wow. And also have a, an administrative uh, okay, secretary. I was wondering if you had to do yep. like your own administrative work or if there was somebody yeah, kind of eliminating the confusion among everyone. Yes. yes. Well, that's pretty neat. Yeah, it now, is. do you interact with other departments? Mm -hmm. Like? Yes. Well, um, so there's a bunch of different ways in which we interact okay. with other departments. Um, I sit on a, some different committees, for lack of a better way of okay. saying it. So um, there's the police and fire. There's a group that we pulled together. Um, recently with the uh, Council on Aging, Board of Health, Police, Fire. Um, I don't know if you've heard or not, but the Police Department got a, one of the Cummings grants and they have a, le a mental health counselor. Oh, yes. at the Police Department. I and actually so, do know her. Yep, she's, <laughs> she's um, part of this uh, a group as well. Oh, okay. And it's a way for us to really work together certain things that may be going on for folks within the community and oh, really find okay. a way to help meet needs. Um, so it's really, it's been a great opportunity for folks to be able to learn more about what each of us do. Oh, okay. Um, there's also a hoarding task force that um, I sit on, my department. Is there a hoarding issue in Berlin? Sure, there's hoarding issues everywhere. Well, in that's every, true. In every community. If you ask my husband, he'll say there's a hoarding <laughs> issue in my basement right now. Yep. So, I know there um, is in my garage. <laughs> that task force. Um, I also meet with the clergy in, in town oh, as well. Oh, okay. I serve on that piece and then um, I interact with um, some of the nonprofits in town, you've heard of People Helping People, oh, okay. Helpies, um, and my department actually does the uh, screening for funds for those plus Salvation oh, Army. Oh, okay. Um, funds now, do you interact with the school at all? Yes. Um, so I, part of, what is it, the uh, Parenting University? Oh, that, yeah. That piece there. Um, okay. I'm one of the folks that- The panelists. The panelists that, oh, okay. that, that work to, um, figure out who we're going to have as a keynote speaker and then oh, what the different okay. topics are and uh, things like that. So, um, and work with guidance counselors in different, uh, some of the different schools. So there's a lot of different um, ways. And you managed to do this mm -hmm. all, wow. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. and that's your 80 hour <laughs> work week? I'm, um. I'm very busy. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like it, but it sounds like it's all, you know, really good and valuable. Yeah, I, think, I think one of the pieces that's really, it, important it's sort of like when you get to do community mental health mm -hmm. it really is a way in which using the resources the and the not just the financial resources okay. but also the folks that are in this community um, as a way to really help support and um, provide what people need that's really true and also it sounds like there might be a little bit of overlap so instead of reinventing the wheel and doing yep. the same thing you could combine forces and just make yes. it that much yes. stronger and, and better yes. and reaching out a little further. Right. So what other services, uh, you know, what services does Youth and Family Services sure. provide? Well, the, the primary piece is the counseling, so probably okay. half of our time is devoted to doing um, adolescent family therapy. So okay. in order to receive services, um, you need to be a resident of the town of Burlington and have okay. an adolescent that ranges anywhere from 9 to 25 okay. in the home. They don't have to be the one coming in. What we do like to do if there is an issue oh, going okay. on for a child, we'd like to have a, as many of the uh, family members in oh, okay. in treatment as possible because we find that oh, okay. um, what we've really discovered is the more people you have in the room, actually the, the um, more efficient and effective hmm. the work can be. Um, we do do individual counseling with adults and oh, with okay. adolescents where needed and um, couples, and then we have a group program as well. Cool. Now, does somebody have to be referred to your office, or can somebody just say, hey, look, I think I need some help, mm -hmm. and come and you know, give you a call or knock on your door? Somebody or is there a little bit of both? It's typically a little bit of both, but okay. you don't need to be referred in order to okay. come in. Um, I think it's also important to note that um, we don't, insurance isn't a factor where we are, oh, so okay. um, for the most part, our 
primary funding sources through the town. We mm -hmm. do charge a, um, a fee, but it's essentially a copay anywhere from a dollar to twenty dollars, depending oh, upon okay. income. And um, one of the mandates that we had was, you know, we don't refuse services based on in inability to pay. Oh, so, okay. Now, do you work with veterans at all? Um, we've worked with some with vet veterans, with some veterans, and we've worked with okay. um, veterans typically um, in our um, basic needs. Some of the basic needs stuff oh, we've helped, okay. we've helped with. So, all right. So, counseling services. Yes. And, and then what other programs? Basic needs is the other yeah, piece what is that we basic do. Basic needs. Well, anybody living in Burlington who's maybe struggling financially, somebody may have lost a job, illness. Oh, okay. um, there are, I name people helping people and okay. uh, helpies. Um, there are resources both within the community and at the state oh, level okay. that people can access. So we do the screening for those social services. Oh, okay. So basically, um, my staff have an opportunity to meet, sit down, and look at what's oh, going on okay. for somebody. How, you know what's been happening that got them into this situation okay. and then looking to figure out how can we help get them out of whatever situation uh, okay. that, they're, that they're in and sometimes that's all people need is just a little something to help yeah. um, keep their head above water exactly. to get through a period of time um, which is really great like I said and there are different um, resources to be able to right. to draw from so um, so you're kind of like the hub and you can correct. say okay well this pr this organization over here can help you here mm -hmm. and and then you could contact like people helping people and say, hey, look, I have a family that mm -hmm. they, needs they meet X, the, Y, and Z. Yep, yeah. and they meet the criteria for this, you know, okay. the funding that you have, and they, they ultimately decide whether or not they're going to, to fund it, but typically it happens, so. Cool. Yeah. So and then we do, the yeah. other pieces that we do, we work within the schools, um, within the high school, we do a curriculum, um, teen depression and suicide. So we go into oh. Burlington High School freshman class and teach a curriculum, okay. on, curriculum on teen depression and suicide. Wow. The funding for that comes from Leahy. They um, give us oh, some grant money to okay. be able to do that. Um, now, I've heard that the middle school has like a teen light program mm -hmm. and- We are the re recipient recipients of half of what they raised oh, okay. this year. And what I had said when they um, Because they don't all, this year they're doing teen suicide. Correct, and depression. But they don't always do that? Correct. Oh, okay. Yeah, the, the students decide what, you know, um, issue they're gonna be tackling, okay. if you would. And one of the things that I had talked with um, Ms. Mantia about was really wanting to have the students themselves work with us to figure oh. out like how, how do we together address yeah. the problem of teen depression and suicide. So it's been great. It's Come been up great. with some solutions? Well, we're starting to, we're Excellent. working in that direction, which is great, so. Cool, yeah, yeah. there's probably no yeah. end <laughs> of, okay, we're done. Yeah, yeah no, I so. don't imagine that. Because it seems like in today's society, teens are going, have, have a lot more pressure. Yes you know, between school and jobs and just the whole social thing yes. and past 10 years maybe? Oh, there's I been a big bullying more thing. Than, more than that it's and the bullying piece. I think that the issue is certainly social media plays a role in that in the sense that okay. I certainly know back when I was in school when you went home, you kind of get to shut that off. Yeah. It's really harder for kids today to be able to shut that stuff off. So um, it leads more leads to more stress for them and pieces for them to be figure out how to manage. So. And there's also a level of anonymity through online resources, through social media. Correct. Yes. So you know, saying something to somebody's face is one and thing and yes. texting, texting them is... Yes, or putting something online know, is yeah. very different. Correct. Okay, so did we talk enough about counseling services? Do you want to expand on that um, at all? Maybe talk a little bit about the group program, if I could. Sure, the, the why not? types of group that we yeah. offer. Um, probably one of the ones that people know us for is the NIPM program, which is mm -hmm. an acronym for National Youth Project Using Mini Bikes. And oh, yeah, I saw that on your website. Yeah, that program has been around for um, more than 35 years now, actually. Wow. Yep. And we work with middle school kids and um, teach them how to ride a dirt bike. Cool. And then they earn their riding time based on a behavioral contract. Oh, wow. So, it, and it can be anything. There are, you know, for some kids, there are difficulties that are going on at school. For some, it has to do with, you know, how they're managing themselves at home. Oh, okay. And it gives the clinician an opportunity to help kids develop, you know, better skills okay. or how to manage difficulties. And um, 
and the more success they have with that, the more riding time they earn. Mm. So it's a great. So you work within the schools as well as within the home, so it's kind of like a joint. Well, the parents and and the youth will determine what it is they want to work on, and some oh, of it, okay. the, some of the um, information comes from the school to parents, okay. um, if you would. But there's a contract that it you know needs to be signed off on okay. each week, and when they bring their contract in, then figure out how much earning, how much oh, writing how much time, time they've earned. earned, if you would. So, yeah. So how big is this program? Um, I mean, yeah, it's been going on for 35 years, but is it like 10 kids? Is it like 100 kids? Or? Oh, yeah, not 100 kids. It, well. it usually ends up being around 10 to anywhere from 10 to 14 kids. Oh, okay. Um, during the academic year, and then we run a summer program, which has oh, you know. Okay. Um, Anywhere from in the past, we've had up to 16 kids that have, you know, 16, 20 kids that have. So, how long gone. is the program? As long as the kid needs it, or um, through middle school and then high school. Um, okay. If they want to continue in the program, there's a junior leader program. Oh. So kids okay. actually get. So to I learn. wasn't sure if there was like you know a 14 week thing oh, and it, you reevaluate or is it, it right, just. It ends up being a, um, for about a 12 to 14 week program that okay. runs during the year. Um, we used to run all year round. Oh, okay. The winter time is a little complicated. Sometimes you don't get I to ride. I don't <laughs> want to ride mini bikes in 20 degree weather right. with so snow and ice on the ground. So we've actually developed a winter program that's a little bit different. Oh, um, cool. So they're snowmobiles. No, it's oh, okay. it more indoor. Um, okay. Some rock climbing. There's a rock climbing oh, um, group that they cool. that they have and. Um, They've actually done cross-country skiing one year. Wow. Um, so there are different kinds of activity groups that we try to develop to Now, where do they ride involved. their bikes? Is um, there some place in town that... You know, Mary Cummings Park, where they have the... Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, up there. Okay. We have permission to ride on that Cause site. I'm like, okay, because so. I'm like, you probably don't want them riding around the streets no. in Burlington. That's right. not a really No, it's all off-road. And again, okay. they're, it's, they're trained by certified okay. NIPM instruct instructors, so... There is a protocol that they need to go through and demonstrate. Okay. Now, do you guys ability. own the bikes or do you lease Honda them? Honda donates you? the bikes to. Oh, um, cool. They're free. The bikes themselves are free. They're donated by American Honda. Um, he's been donating bikes for like 40 years now, I think. 35, <coughs> 40 years. Wow. So, right. He really wanted to work with youth within um, in America and it was cool. a great way to be able to help kids who Sweet. otherwise wouldn't get sometimes yeah. wouldn't get help so okay. it really is a great program sounds cool yeah. uh, do you actually run that or do you have somebody no my staff run I mean I've, okay. I've run groups in the past okay. myself but do you get to go yes <laughs> you get to ride yeah <laughs> there you go yes I do so and then you know the other groups that we have are the fit girls yeah, I heard <laughs> about that. I didn't know that was through you. Can yep, you tell me more about that? Fourth and fifth grade girls. It's a great, it's a reading, running, and community service Ooh, uh, group. Okay. So basically, uh, fourth and fifth grade girls, we have this running in each of the elementary schools. Okay. And, um, now is it like, you know, jogging long distance running, or is it just like running around a track? It's or? typically running around the, a track. Okay. And you start where, wherever, young okay. girl is and so some some girls start off walking and then end up running um, there is a 5k at the end of it Ooh. so um, it's been great to watch the sort of growth and development of girls and in in that mm -hmm. really feeling proud of of their accomplishments if you would so now how or why would a girl sign up for this program is it also like because she's got behavior no. issues to this one here or? is really just about fourth and when you think about fourth fifth grade for girls mm -hmm. it's where they're self-esteem begins to you know okay. turn a bit so it's a way of really helping to engage girls to oh. continue to feel good about themselves okay. and um, and to see what they're capable of doing so cool. and the reading piece of it is really you know books that have um, you know women as the protagonist mm. and um, girls talk about the different sure. books that they've read or Hard are reading find. Yep. <laughs> and um, and uh, you know what they like about the book, and then okay. So it's like a book club almost. There's a there's an element element of it that's that's oh. part of a book club and fun. And then it, each group decides what they're going to do for a community service project. Oh. And um, at the beginning, it runs for six weeks, and okay. um, we run that in the fall, and we run it in the spring as well. So cool. What are some of the community service projects that have been done in the past? Um, a lot of them have been. Um, they've done the blankets, so that you oh, know. Oh yeah. For uh, the no sew with yes, the yes, oh. exactly. And they've done some planting projects mm. in places, and there was something that they did for the for 
cats and dogs. I don't know, remember exactly what that project was, but I remember Yeah, my Girl Scouts love to work with animals. Yep. And right now they're fourth graders, so <laughs> I can completely <laughs> understand yep. that. So, it's really funny when they have the 5K, our girls are lined right up front <laughs> where that <laughs> starting piece is. Just ready to go, which is really great to see. So I love it. Yeah, it sounds fun. Wonderful. So, and then we have the parenting journey group, which okay, is okay. What's a, that? It's a uh, twelve-week group where um, parents get together, and there's, it's a, an actual curriculum that you go through. Oh, okay. Um, it really is. It's like parents of all age children. All age doesn't or? matter how old your okay. children are. If it really is about um, if you're wanting to to look at your parenting, you know. Most parents want to become better parents, so um, it, there's that focus and with it. And there's no book? <laughs> nope. <laughs> and it really is about help, helping parents to focus a bit on themselves, because I oh. think, you know, as a parent, it's really easy to pay attention to what your kids' needs are and not so much on your own. Okay. And so some of this really is about how you take care of yourself while you're taking care oh, of your children okay. and, um, and what it feels like to, to do that. So wow. And it's We've had great success with that program, um, and some parents have continued after the group is, okay. you know, ended. Now is it generally like support. co-parenting or parents, you know, couple parents yep. or single I parents or both? Yep. Okay. So we, you know, we certainly have had couples that have come okay. to the group together along with single parents. Um, now, do the kids come along with them or oh, for parents okay. only? It starts off with a meal. So you get nourished, day night, and then no, you learn how to nourish. <laughs> you learn how to nourish yourself, and then nourishing your oh. children. So, and how often does this run? Um, typically once a year. Um, okay. So we haven't run it this past year. Okay. But most of it is in t timing, trying to get it up and running. So oh, okay. Yeah. And then you said it's like a six week. Twelve week. Twelve week when it actually starts, and there is a curriculum. Now, do you write the curriculum, or do you get it? It's from a curriculum that's actually been developed um, oh, okay. by a uh, f family therapy organization, if you would. Oh, so okay. we follow. We literally follow the curriculum. Okay. And each each week has a focus to it, um, and uh, you know, it's great. How many parents are generally like in one group that you have it? Um, six to eight. Okay. Which is like. You get much bigger than that, it yeah. tends to I've be not I was kind personal of enough, along, if yeah. you would, but six to eight on average. So. Sweet. So what about crisis intervention and assessment? I saw that on your sure. website. Sure. Um, with the schools, there are times where kids may be in having a crisis. Okay. And so we may get a phone call from the school asking to come up and do an assessment or oh, okay. um, it's, it's Student may have been suspended for a particular reason, okay. so wanting an assessment before they come back to school. So that's a piece that my staff will do, meet and, and do an assessment to see whether, and make, make sure that basically a student is safe. Okay. Um, and safe for themselves and safe to return so to school. So is that generally with the schools or do you also do In general, like but we've also, had, we've also had, we've also had, you know, people that have called, they've had a crisis go on, okay. have somebody come up, have the family come up and meet with them and sort of we get a sense of what's going on okay. and find ways to intervene and figure out moving forward what's necessary. Okay. So that can, it can vary, it can be sometimes there's just a disagreement that's going on that okay. escalated and so talking about ways to be able to intervene earlier on. Okay. Um, de-escalate. To de-escalate okay. the situation, correct, yeah. Now how has, a couple of questions, how has that changed since the police department received that grant because my understanding, which is like third or fourth person, is that's what their crisis intervention person is supposed to be doing. Their crisis intervention person actually different? goes out on calls with the police. Okay. And so, or um, may go to the home. Um, okay. Where so it doesn't really overlap with what you have. Not so much. And no, there's a lot of collaboration that goes on because some of the okay. folks that may go into a house and find out that people could use services and they okay. will refer to us. Okay. So, and, um, you know, if we hear about something going on and somebody's not ready to come through our doors, but okay. this may be going on. So there's a way in which just to kind of have an awareness of needs and what might be going on. What kind of turnaround time? I mean, if somebody's having a crisis, it's kind of like a, okay, now you have to do something, but mm -hmm. 
you have a life outside of your job, mm -hmm. I would hope. Mm -hmm. So what is the turnaround time if somebody's having an issue by the time you get to go and talk to that person? Is well, typically it like tomorrow or? Um, yeah, how does that work? I'll just shut up now. <laughs> typically, it, it's within 24 hours. Um, okay. Sometimes if if there isn't a staff person available to do a crisis in intervention okay. that needs to be right, done right then and there, there is an organization called Advocates. They're sort of the our oh. um, regionally okay. an organization for people for people to call. Oh, but okay. um, you know, most often it depends on how urgent something is. So okay. somebody who's been a student that's been suspended may not need to be seen right away, but within okay. that week needs to be seen. Okay. So we can set it up that way. But like I said, we can make it a phone call from the high school, oh, and okay. somebody would run, you know, go up to the high school and meet with a student to okay. assess, and then. Yeah, when I hear the word crisis, I'm thinking like, you know, run away, yeah. you know, <laughs> drop everything, and go. Okay. Yeah. So and it's and not necessarily that. Not that. Not that critical. No, because one would then be going to the hospital. Yes. If you would, so. Fair the enough. The emergency room. So. So how, you know, we talked a little bit earlier about individuals could come and seek your services mm -hmm. or they're referred. Is it like a 50-50 split or how would someone go about, do they call and make an appointment? Do they just show up at your door? They would call and um, one of the clinicians would gather some information and set up an intake. Okay. And there are specific times where we have staff to do intake. So. Um, and when they call, do they say this is what they need so you know which of the clinicians is more geared to that field or? The intake process itself is any clinician that's available. Oh, okay. And so um, the way we structure things is there is somebody that does the intake. They may or may not be the person that, that okay. gets the case. Um, but we have the family come in to gather information oh, to then okay. figure out what is the best way to work with them. Oh, and um, okay. there are some times where somebody may come in or even on the phone if you get a sense that there's an issue where it makes sense for them to go to a more specialized treatment, okay. we might make that re recommendation. And you would be able to refer them to Correct. X, you know, this place or that yes. place. Okay. Yes. Well, you just answered my next question about when would you refer somebody. <laughs> um, we talked about, you know, early on we talked about the different departments in town mm -hmm. that you've partnered with. Do you partner with other towns or like regional organizations you mentioned advocate 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 advocates advocates mm -hmm. um, or state there's a group protocol that, that um, I belong to it's a youth commission group for other communities that have you know um, youth services okay uh, similar to what we have um, and so they meet on a quarterly basis okay and it's a place where different resources that you hear about that are going on, different things that are going on at the state level, there's an opportunity to talk about those pieces. So that kind of stuff is what. Okay. Now you mentioned just now answering the question was other towns or other com um, communities mm -hmm. that have services like ours. Mm -hmm. Do all towns have some kind of services for youth and families? No. Okay. How frequent does that happen? I mean, how is it more popular than not to have a youth and family services? No, I don't know or? exactly how many communities have, you know, youth, youth councils, youth and family okay. services. Um, I like know that within the group that I'm a part of, there are probably 15, 16 communities in okay. this general vicinity oh, okay. that, that do. But certainly, some of their some some of the larger cities, I don't okay. know that they, you know, have. Um, okay. Well, it's pretty cool that Burlington has yes. one. I mean, Burlington's got a lot of really cool stuff they going do. on. They do. So, we mentioned that a lot of your funding comes from the town. Mm -hmm. How frequently do you have to apply for grants for special programs or grants to supplement what the town gives you or hiring another staff? 
like we mentioned, the police department getting the Cummings grant mm -hmm. to hire that other person, which I think is like a two-year contract. Correct. So do you find your department doing any of that additional sourcing? The additional grants that we have gotten or funding that we've gotten, um, for the most part, like the Leahy monies that okay. funds that piece, um, Burlington Area Chamber of Commerce, you know, okay. has done some fundraising for us. We've used that for some of the group uh, okay. pieces that we've done. And do you seek them out or do they come to you and say, hey, we want to help you out? The or? chamber came to us. Um, we found out about the Leahy grants. Chenna um, also has some grant opportunities. Oh. So okay. we um, actually applied for one of their grants to do the, um, oh my goodness, I'm going to draw one of those lovely little blanks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do all the, the youth time. Youth Risk Behavior Survey. Um, okay. Yeah, so that's... Oh, there was a Youth Risk Behavior Survey in the schools not too long ago. Correct, and we okay. we've partnered with them to do, oh, okay. to do that. Um, it was one of my staff, I'm trying to think of how many years it is, I think probably eight or ten years now. Oh, wow. Um, okay, now I'm feeling grant, old. We got a grant <laughs> and um, did a youth, youth you know, YRBS, oh, and then okay. the school continued to, oh, to fund wow. it in Leahy provides the funding for the YRBS now as well, so. Cool. Yeah. Now we talked about behavioral issues. Mm -hmm. How often is substance use or abuse also playing a role in the behavioral issues mm -hmm. or the crisis or the situations? Mm -hmm. um, I would say at least 25% of our cases, okay. it, you know, here's the piece. Some will come in specifically around substance use and others okay. come in around other things and you discover there are substance oh, okay. use issues as well. I mean, so do you bother tracking this or is it just, mm -hmm. oh, okay. And I and um, I don't have the figures off the top of okay. my head, but I, I know that. Yeah, see, I'm always going on tangents. There's, a, there's about, there's about 25 to 40% of what we have that oh, have okay. some where substance use is okay. in the mix, for lack of a better way of saying it. Now, so. if there is a case of substance use or abuse, do you end up referring them to someone else? It depends. It depends okay. on you know how severe things are, where things are. We certainly, okay. um, sometimes doing the family work um, is done. We do the family piece, the individual for okay. somebody struggling with substance use, maybe something that we refer out. Okay. Um, so it, it just varies. It depends on the I know the it can get pretty severity. complicated in there because, <coughs> yeah, for lots of reasons. Okay. What kind of anonymity, if any, is provided to your clients? Mm -hmm. Same an anonymity that you would get in any mental health okay. clinician's office that you would go into. Because I'm thinking, you know, there is still a, a stigma in our society today about seeking mm -hmm. help for psychological issues. And here we go on another tangent. How do you see that stigma breaking down or becoming eliminated? Do you see it going away? Do I see the stigma going away? I certainly know in the, I mean, I've been doing this for 25 uh -huh. years. I think the stigma is less now than it okay. had been. Um, and I think for oftentimes people that are, that are seeking services, it is easier today to be able to okay. say I need help than, than it had been. Sometimes saying what you need help about may be where, okay. you know, it's difficult for people, but, um, okay. and, and there certainly are those folks where it really is hard coming through the door Sometimes people will come through the door starting with a group program. Oh, it gives them an okay. opportunity to, you know, some parents will, you know, want their kids to be involved in something. They get their kids involved and they get to meet us and, and sort of oh, see us, okay. know us, and get a sense that we're not, you know. Not big and scary. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, and then they'll come in for. Because you're not big and scary. No, right. Okay. But, you know, that's what sometimes people think. It's like, you know, parents oftentimes, and I think this is true, parents oftentimes feel like I'm going to be blamed for whatever's okay. going on. And so really trying to help them see, you know, it's not easy being a parent. Right. And, you know, in what goes on for today's kids is complicated. And mm -hmm. so needing help and support around that um, doesn't mean you're a failure as, as a parent by any stretch of the imagination. So 
Um, sometimes they just have to come in and meet us and see, is this going to be a safe place to be able to look at what I need to look at? So. And what kind of cultural issues have you found in Burlington that affects people coming to seek your services? Well, certainly with some of the Burlington is becoming, you know, rich in its cultural di cultural diversity. Exactly. Um, and we've had a lot of folks come through our doors, which oh, has okay. been great. Not necessarily easy for them to do because okay. there is a cult for some cultures. It is. Now, does your staff get cultural sensitive? I, I don't know what the word right word is, but like a cultural sensitivity training. Yes, we've had that, so. and um, we'll continue to have the, those kinds okay. of trainings. It's important. So now. Just thinking back on, what's your title again? Social, uh, mental health. Mm -hmm. For your license to be a mental health clinician, what kind of training do you have to go through and to keep certified? You know, is it a state certification? Is it a local certification? It's a state, is it, it's okay. a state certification? And is it like a one-year thing? A two-year thing? Every two years, okay. you need to get um, CEs, CEUs. Okay. Twenty, I guess twenty-four, a uh, thirty CEUs. Okay. Every two years, so and you go to trait. You can decide which trainings that you want to go to. Okay. Um, my staff and I have done a lot of training in trauma. Done a lot more trauma training. Okay. A lot more family systems training. So, um, and substance use. Pieces, okay. so. Now, where do you go for this training? Is it the colleges that you mentioned your interns come from, or is there like there organizations, are organizations that There's do organizations that provide different kinds of trainings, oh, okay. you know, with the uh, folks that are top in the field, so. Oh, okay. Bessel van der Kolk is one of the tops in trauma, oh, and so okay. you know, his organization that runs a bunch of different trauma trainings. And wow, so okay. So. Yeah, that would be kind of scary. What would be? Yeah. Dealing with, dealing with different types of trauma. When I think trauma, I think of like, you know, car accidents or yeah. something. And yeah. Now, do you actually, like if somebody were in a traumatic situation, a house fire or a car accident or something, mm -hmm. would you wait for them to become physically stable? Or would you like go to the hospital or during their treatment to like work with them? It depends on how we come to know what okay. what's going on. There are uh, okay. some places certainly where there's an opportunity to kind of get to know people and let them know, you know, we're here. Okay. Um, and others, we, they hear from other people and come through okay. our doors, so it just, it varies. So what kind of out, do, you know, do you have like an outreach program? We don't have an outreach program per okay. se. Um, we try to go to as many events that are going on in the community okay. as a way to... Well, that's an outreach program, you know. <laughs> okay. Um, so, like, when you say events in the community, like the Burlington Health Fair, or, like, right. do you have a presence at Celebrate Burlington at all? No, or? that's our next piece that we're going to do. Oh. We had done, um, you know, back-to-school nights. We'd gone to those oh, okay. as a way for parents to kind of know who we are, so... Um, back-to-school nights at the middle school or high school? And elementary school. And elementary, okay. Right don't really remember you coming to my kids' elementary school, so Which either I'm not paying attention or Pine Glen. Okay, yeah, no, they were at, um, we actually had somebody at every oh, elementary okay. school. So. Shows how much I pay attention. <laughs> Talk <laughs> about bad parenting. Hello. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, you mentioned the continuing ed requirements. Mm -hmm. Do you ever have like a train the trainer where like your staff would partner and teach elementary school teachers or high school teachers how to de-escalate a situation We or haven't done that piece, mostly t time wise okay. than anything. Could you ever see yourself? It'd be great to do something, you know. In, yeah, in your copious spare time. <laughs> said, said sarcasm there, okay. So when you know, I know we talked about this again, but let's kind of, you know, refresher here. When would somebody go to seek your services? Can you give me like concrete examples? Like sure. if they just go through a divorce or? Sure. Um, again, would depend on who is sending them okay. through the door. So it may be something goes on for a, 
kid at school. Okay. And, you know, school reaches out to parents and might say, you know, think that like a behavioral he needs help. thing or might just academic performance or both for the oh, okay. behavioral academic um, and might send them our way. Sometimes oh, okay. um, people that have used our services, if they hear of a friend or a neighbor okay. as having difficulty, will say, you know, why don't you call and let them gotcha. know, you know, call and call oh, them, okay. get an appointment with them. I think it'll be helpful. Um, we get referrals from the police, from fire. <coughs> we actually got a referral from the assessor's office, which was a very appropriate referral. Yeah, there was really? a um, hmm. grandparent who was upset about her grandchild and was distraught. And they said, I think you need to go s see the folks over wow. at Youth and Family Services. I think okay. they can help you. It was great. Wow. I'm thinking they complained about what their house was assessed for. Or so. <laughs> no, they went there for something else, but she okay. was upset because of something that had oh, gone on. Okay. But it was, so it was just like... So when you talk about like somebody in like something going on and somebody yeah. needing and how would they know, it's like the assessor's office said, I think you need to go talk oh. with them. And she did, which was Well, that's great. pretty cool. Yeah. So. Just down the street, a couple of buildings. Yeah. So if someone were to come for your services, can you give me an example? Would, you know, would it be like a one-time deal or repeated? You know, like would they would they do like the you know a six-week program or is it an as-needed basis? It's typically an as-needed basis, and so. Like I said, people will come in for an intake. Okay. The um, clinician will will gather together as staff to sort of talk about what's the best okay. way to deal and help this family, and then give them that feedback. And if they're in agreement, they will come in. Okay. And typically, what a clinician might say is, you know, let's take this next four weeks to get a sense of what's oh, going okay. on and start to do some work and see, you know, how things are going. And okay. so it's contracted as you go along. Okay. And Again, depending upon what the issue is, it just determines how long the length of treatment might be. So, okay. Now, is all the treatment done at your office, or do you do like home visits? I have one clinician or that does some home visits. Okay. In general, as much as possible, we like for people to come into the office. Okay. But there are some times where we need to go out to somebody's home, oh, okay. and, and we do that piece as well. So, so. I'm like looking at the rest of my questions, to kind of wrapping things up. Um, what is your most memorable case? I mean, without saying any names, mm -hmm. because then you'd have to kill me, but mm -hmm. is there like one case where the success was just totally amazing, or maybe it was a disaster that just stuck in your head, or? That's interesting. I'll just go with the first one that popped into my head. I was working with a, a family where the parents were divorced and there was a lot of animosity between parents and okay. the children had sort of been decided that they were going to stay with one parent and not have anything to do with the other parent. Okay. This other parent wanted to, you know, get back in their ch children's okay. lives and so really sought our services. And <coughs> it was one of those fascinating cases where when they came in, kids had their, you know, their little hoodies, hoodies over, okay. didn't want to engage in anything, and um, had to sit that one out a little bit and hang out mm. with that piece of things. And I remember sort of asking one of the siblings, you know, a question about why, you know, the other one was had a hoodie on okay. and um, eventually got talking and then little by little they sort of came out and were able to talk about hmm. about stuff and sort of moving it to a place where the kids could really have a relationship with, okay. to choose to have a relationship with both of their parents and sort of get out of the middle of things, which oh. is not, you know, when there's a lot of animosity in, in divorce, it's complicated for kids. So I think all around that helped okay. everybody in the family. Now, in a situation like that, would you have to work with the, the court system to figure out custody? Was it nope. a custody thing, or was it just? Nope, okay. it wasn't a custody thing. It was, again, sort of, because courts in general want for children to have relationships with both of mm -hmm. their parents. Um, 
I think uh, at the time one of the parents needed to go and ask, you know, to push for this piece. Oh, okay. But once it started to happen, it was it really didn't okay. work out well. So, which is not always the case. So in this situation, it was it was a lot of hard work, but it, the payoff. Now, what was, was really the good. the time frame of this? Was it a matter of months? Was it a matter of years? Um, well, hopefully not years, but month. It was months for things to begin to start to move, and it was okay. probably about a year or so. Okay. To come to a place where things were got to break down the walls and chisel away. Exactly. Yep. Uh, okay. Yeah. Now, you mentioned that you with, with you've been with the department for 25 years. Mm -hmm. So you've I'm sure you've seen a ton of changes in that time. Two questions: Where would you like to see the department go in the next five years, and where do you think it's going to go? Mm. Yeah, I know. I'm so mean. <laughs> or if you only want to answer one, what you know, which one would you choose to answer? And I think where I'd like to see the department go, I'd like to see us continue to expand some of the group work that we okay. do. I'd like to see more connection within the um, schools, um, because again, it's sort of like some of the issues that are coming up are coming up much younger. Oh, um, okay. So in, even in the elementary schools, you know, anxiety is one of a big piece for kids these days, so really trying to, to find a way to have more of a um, collaborative approach oh, to okay. addressing things and more of a community approach to addressing things. So I'd like to see more of that, those pieces. We have a really good relationship in the high school and in the middle school as well. I'd like oh, to see okay. us, you know, this is also something that's really hard to do when you have four full-time positions. Well, yeah. So, you know, that's what I'd like. We'll see what happens. Like another five <laughs> people on my <laughs> staff, you know. Exactly. <laughs> So. Oh man, I just had a question and I totally zoned out of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, let's come up with something, something else to talk well, can about. I, you know what, it, yes. there's a piece of history that I can okay. give you. It's sort of like, um, our department actually came into being back in the early 70s because when 128 was built, Okay. The big exit is from the city. Burlington had the highest rate of adolescents per capita in the state of Massachusetts. Wow. And the town said, what are we going to do with all of these kids? Okay. So we started as a um, drop-in center. <coughs> oh, and okay. Of course, when stuff like that happens and communities like, what are they doing over there? Yeah. And they decide, let's make it a department so that we can kind of oversee and make cool. sure okay. that things are, things are going um, in a direction that's useful, if you would. Okay. So was 1974, I think, is when we became a town department. Oh, and okay. the other piece of it is we have like a pretty high um, senior population now, okay. which is you know roughly the number of years where one would move from, start moving mm -hmm. into the senior yep. generation. So yeah. I think I remembered my question. Okay. Now you mentioned you know the the highest rate of adolescents per capita. Mm -hmm and working with the schools. In your experience, have there been common themes, like especially when it comes to anxiety, mm -hmm. that for our audience tonight, if they realize before having to come to, you know, before the problem gets significant enough to have to come to seek your services, are there like, any general advice that you could give to someone? Hmm. I think as much as possible, talk to your kids about what you see going on. And talk okay. about it not so much as this is what I see going on for you, but tell me about what's, tell me about what's going on for uh, you. Okay. You seem upset. Um, I think when it comes to anxiety, sometimes it really is helping kids to there is a lot of pressure for kids. Helping to be the balance of the social pressures, you know, the okay. pressure to succeed, all of that kind of stuff. To help kids recognize they will get where they need to get to. Okay. Um, take a deep breath, it's all gonna be good. Um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head other kinds of pieces that would be. But it also takes time too, because yeah, like you said in, in your example, once the wall's been built, it takes a while. You know, well, kids, a lot of kids don't want to talk to their parents. I'm fine. 
That's where, but you know, don't underestimate those drives to and from places where kids are in the back seat, you're in the front seat. Those are the best times mm. to have those kinds of conversations because they don't have to look at you. Oh. They, they can change the subject if they want to change the subject, but you use that as the opportunity okay. to just inquire oh. whatever it is that you might like to okay. know. Um, and you'd be surprised sometimes what, what kids will, okay. will share just in those persistence. moments. Persistence pays. Because I've heard so many people say, you know, oh, I talked to my kids. What did you do in school today? Nothing. Yeah, so it's you trying know. to get more specific than that. Okay. Hmm. That sounds pretty interesting. So, okay, anxiety. Mm -hmm. We're talking about anxiety. What are some of the trends that you have seen in the past 25 years of why you think anxiety is becoming a bigger issue? Oh. Um, I think sometimes it, it, there is the, the pressure to succeed is pretty intense for kids these days. Do you think it comes from parents or no, is it like No, I think like it internalized? comes from everywhere. I, oh, I don't okay. think it's any one thing. I think you go, you go on social media, at school, at home, you can see what other kids are doing and the stress that they're, it, mm -hmm. it becomes something that, that you pick up, if you would, oh, okay. for lack of a, it isn't necessarily somebody saying, you've got to do this, you've got to be okay. this. I think it's what people see and feel going on all around them. Oh, and okay. so, again, that's where I think having the conversations are with kids around, helping them to see, you might be feeling this, okay. we want you to know, you know, and, and giving your own experiences of how you as a parent have learned those, those things for yourself. Um, yes, yeah, some of the ways in which the stuff um, kids are experiencing and come in contact with it is different than it was a generation ago, okay. but the issues to some degree are the same. Now, do you think, um, you know, I'm also thinking back to, you know, my daughter's Girl Scout leader. Mm -hmm. So I have this amazing group of, of young women and I'm realizing that there's so much competition for their time, you know, between Girl Scouts and piano lessons and dance and cheerleading and homework mm -hmm. and sports and art classes and I, I can't even think of everything. Yes. Do you think that just having the availability of doing more things like when I was growing up it was either scouts or sports and that was like it right and now it's like kids feel like they have to do yes. everything do you see that as playing a role yes there was many what I think two or three iterations of the hurried child you know where kids that are being overbooked if you would for lack of a better way of saying it I think some of that piece is, is true there is a lot of opportunity I think there isn't a lot of opportunity sometimes for kids to just be. Be a kid. Yep, and not have some place that they need to be or something that they have to do just to be able to, to be. Do you see that changing at all in the next few no. years? I don't know what it would take for that kind of okay. change. Because I was going to ask you, what could we do <laughs> as a society or as a community? Here's a book out there called At What Cost? And it really, okay. he's done some great research on looking at, you know, uh, different s schools and public and private schools okay. to look at, you know, we want our kids to excel and succeed, mm -hmm. but there's been such pressure and that it keeps getting bumped up and up in yeah. terms of what the expectations are. And there is part of that is part of why we have the suicide rate, the attempt attempted suicide and completed suicide mm -hmm. rates that we have. Um, and looking at where the changes would need to happen okay. and who's going to be the wise person to take that risk because it is a big risk. And how young do these changes need to be introduced? Well, I think it's pretty difficult when you have um, preschool or what is it, no, daycare where you have to get your child into a specific daycare yeah. in order to get them into a particular school. So it goes pretty young. It's pretty young. And even like daycares and preschools now have you know, the yoga class and the music class and 
all and some of that, that stuff, stuff is is useful to have because they are good okay. good skills but it'd be nice to take that big picture look and look at what is it that's contributing to okay. all of this stress that's on our children and at what cost and okay. really as a as a society how do you have an engaged conversation because it it would take you know it takes a village so it would take the village um, to make a commitment to changing mm -hmm. so not easy it, Having the conversation would be a great start. Okay, having the conversation with your kid, or with well, I'm a, I'm more of a systems thinker, a so systems I go thinker. I go okay. and, and think about it on a you know with parents, schools, community okay. leaders. You so know. it's kind of a conversation that needs to take yep. place everywhere. Yep, at home and in the oh, larger okay. community. All right. There are some communities that do like a an unplugged weekend. So um, Needham does a great oh, unplugged really? weekend where you know. They commit to not using electronics for the weekend. Wow! And um, they even had their, you know, uh, selectmen involved in, in that. Really? So yeah, it was really was a community-wide effort that they that they've done. So Do you think Burlington should try something like that? I'd like to see Burlington try something. Like that. I know that the school is working on finding ways to be able to, okay. you know, do things that help reduce stress for students. So, so yeah. I thought you were going to say learning ways of unplugging and like wait they give every kid an iPad isn't that like a contradiction in terms or something no because I think I think some of the technology pieces are okay. useful but there's like what can we take some Where time away from a, a, from that yeah that world if you would so and I think the school definitely supports that piece and do you have any advice for parents on how to unplug their kids without totally like <laughs> flipping Start small. Switch. It's like start small. You know, you okay. have a time of day where there's nobody has any electronics. Okay. Do it for an hour, and then build on that. Oh, I'd be the worst parent. Of course. Ever. Of course, but talk. This is where have a coffee yeah. with other parents and sit down and try to do it collectively. Yeah. So then you can go. Well, we're not the only one. So and so's parents are doing the same thing. This is where you know, sort of joining yeah. parents together would be great. The whole it takes a village. Yeah. Thing. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. Peer pressure in a good way. <laughs> exactly. It's like you know, I've always been torn about the whole peer pressure thing. You know, it's like, well, if these kids did that, would you want to do? <laughs> But then at the same time, well, all of your friends are, you yeah. know, unplugging, yeah. and yeah. you know, so. But you do it in a, in, a, in a way that really does invite for them. You're not, you aren't, I know you think you're alone, you're not alone. Well, with that, we are out of time. So thank you very much. Thank you, I appreciate I it. I enjoyed your stories. I enjoyed learning about what Youth and Family Services does. And I think it's a very valuable resource. So thank you for all thank of the you. work that you do. Really appreciate the opportunity. And hopefully have another 25 years. Yes, thank okay, you. Okay, well, maybe not, <laughs> but 50. So anyway, I would like to thank everyone ho at home for tuning in this evening. I hope you found something valuable in tonight's conversation like I did. And I hope you enjoy this beautiful weather, and I will see you around town. Good night.